Are you struggling to keep your website design consistent across all pages? Or maybe you are dreamed of updating your site style without wrestling with complicated code. Well, say hello to Divi5. In this video, we are going to walk you through how you can build your very own design framework with Divi5's latest tools like design variables, option group presets and element presets. These features make it easy to create stunning cohesive websites without writing a single line of code and all of this will be handled inside Divi Visual Builder. So if you want to create your own design framework using Divi 5 then let's dive in. My name is Ankit and you are watching Elegant Themes YouTube channel, the makers of the Divi Visual Builder. So what exactly is a design framework? It's like a style playbook for your website, a collective of reusable design choices that keeps everything looking polished and unified. Now traditional frameworks like bootstraps are great but they often demand custom coding and anything beyond the basics. Divi 5 changes the game by letting you build your framework visually inside Divi 5 Visual Builder. No code, just creativity. So let's explore how its standout features make this all possible. Just a heads up, DB5 is perfect for new sites, but hold off on converting existing one for now. And if you want to deep dive in this topic and learn more about it, we have created a complete blog post that you can go ahead and read in the video description below. So once you are done with this video, check out the video description for our blog post. I'm sure you will find it helpful. First up, design variables. Now these are secret weapon for your global control. Imagine setting your brand's primary color once in the variable manager. You can use it for buttons, headings, backgrounds or anywhere where you can think of. If your design evolves and you need a new shade, just tweak the variable once and every spot using it updates instantly. Let me show you how it works. Alright, so here we are inside our DB5 Visual Builder and let's see how we can access our design variables and how we can use them. So for that we have an option here. It says Variable Manager. So let's click on this and let me just bring it up a little bit. All right. So here we can see we have global variables and we have certain different types of global variables. We have numbers, text, images, links, colors, fonts. So these are the type of variables that we can define inside our global variables. For example, let's say we want to choose fonts. So here we can define how our heading, body or any other custom font type will look like. If you want to add one more font variable, we can click on this. Let's give it a name and we can simply choose a font from our list. In the same way, we can define variables like color. So we can define various color scheme that we are going to use on our website. And once again, if you want to add one more, we can simply click on this and then choose our color. Along with that, we can also use links that we are going to repeatedly use on our website so we can define them as a variable and then use it anywhere. In the same way we can also use image variable so right now we have a logo and we have given it a name as black logo and again in order to create a new one we can click on add global image we can upload it from our media library so we can choose any image from here let's say this one and then click on save. So now we have this image here and we will give it a name as line BG. So we are going to use this as a background image. And in the same way we can define a text variable. Let's say we have some repetitive content that we are going to use on our website like address, contact details. So we can define them as text variable and simply use them wherever we need to type in all these details. In the same way we have numbers. So here we have defined various numbers and we are going to use them for spacing or maybe for font. So you can define the number here and you can use it for any kind of spacing or font size. And once we have defined all these global variables, we can simply click on save and apply changes. And now these variables are ready to use on anywhere on our website. Once we have defined our design variables, let's see how we can use them for creating our page or anywhere on our website. 
So for this example, let's say we choose these three column and let's go ahead and add a blur module here like this. So here we have image for the module. We have the title and the text here. Now in order to style this, we can go ahead and individually select our background font size or typography and all that can be done for this particular blur module. But the smarter way is we can use our design variables that we have just created. Let me show you how. So we come back here in content and in the background, we click on this. Here, if we click on global, we can see all the color that we have defined in our variable manager. That is here. So all these global colors we see here are actually coming from our global color variables that are listed here. So we can choose any background from this list. Let's say we go with this one. So we are not defining any custom color from here. We are using our global variables. In the same way, we can go to design and for the title text, we can go ahead and define the font from this list, but we are going to use our design variables. So we click on this dynamic content option. And here we have list of fonts that we have defined in our global variable manager. So let's say we choose fancy so we can see it's instantly got updated. In the same way, we can change the text size as well. So we select our global variable list here. And now we can choose any font from this list. Let's say this one. So this is how it's going to look. And we can do the same with the body text as well. We select the font from the global variable. We can also choose the color from global variable as well. And after that, let's go down to spacing. And here we can define the spacing again using our global variables. So for padding, let's say we again choose our variables and we are going to choose this one. And we are going to choose the same for bottom as well. And we will repeat the same for left and right. So let's click here and link it to the right as well. So this is how it's going to look by using these global variables. Same goes with the border as well. We can choose the border radius. And this is how it's going to look. So we have defined the look of this blur module by just using the global variables. Now we can take this to the next level by creating an option group preset using our global variables. And now let's say I want to add another blur module here. And this is how the default blur module will look. Now I don't want to repeat all these global variables again to create this blur module. The smarter way would be if there is a preset I could apply and instantly get this blur module styled, that'll be much better. And we can do that by using our global variables and creating our option group preset that we can not just use on this module, but also on other modules as well. Let me show you how. So for this blurred module, let's say you want to create an option group preset, like a background color, which we can use not just on this blurred module, but on other modules as well. So we click on this background here and Instead of choosing any color from here or from our global list, we are going to choose this option here. It says select group preset. So we click on this and we already have few options here, but let's go ahead and create a new one. So I click on this one, add new preset. And now I can choose any background color from this. So let's say I go ahead and choose my global variables again. And this time I choose this one as a background. And I'll name my preset as lime green two. So I save this preset here. So here we have our lime green preset, which I can use on this blurred module background or maybe any other module. In the same way, we can go to design and for spacing, we can create an option. And here you can see we already have padding 10 and spacing 0.5 REM. We have already created these option group preset. 
If we want, we can again go ahead and create new one. And the process remains the same. We click on add new preset, give it a name and define what we want here. And instead of entering direct values, we can use our global variables from the list. So once I have created my option group preset, I can click on that. And now I have a padding around this blur module using my option group preset. In the same way, we can go ahead and create a new preset for border radius and everything else. Like we already have this border 20 pixel. So it's going to add a 20 pixel border here. And for the box shadow as well. So it's going to add some box shadow like this. And as I mentioned before, it's not just for one module. Let's say I go ahead and add one section again. And let's start by adding a heading. And then we add some text here. And now I want to use all these option group presets and do styling similar to this blur module for this section. So I click on this column. And here. And here again, I can click on the background, choose my background like we did for this blur module. Again, go to design for spacing. I'm going to use my padding 10 pixel. For the border, I'm going to use the border 20 pixel. And for the box shadow, we are going to use orange. So we have just recreated the similar look, but for a different module. So this is how we can use option group preset created by using global variables and use them on any module. Then we got element presets, the ultimate time savers. It's like cloning your best designs without the hassle. So let's see this one in action. All right, so we are back inside our visual builder and this time we are going to see how we can create element preset for a particular module. And for this example, we are going to take this blur module and in order to create a preset for this one, we have an option here. It says select a preset for a particular module that is our element preset. We click on this and here we are going to click on add new preset. So we click on this. Let's give it a name first, something like this. And now we want to choose all the styling that we want inside this preset. So let's click on background and let's choose our colors. So this is how it should look. And if I go in design, I can choose my spacing with my variables like this. And I can choose the same for all the other two as well, like this. And after spacing, I can also add border. So we will choose 15 pixel round. So this is going to add a border here. And I also add a box shadow like this. So this is the look I need for my blurred module. And once we are satisfied, we can click on save preset. So now we have our element preset for the blurred module is saved. Here it is. Now let's go ahead and add another blurred module. And we want to make this one look like the first one that we have created. So all we need to do is click on this module and then go to our element preset. And here we select the preset that we have just created. Let's click on this and boom. It simply copied all the style to this one as well. But let's say we want to use this look every time when we add a new blur module, which means that we want to set this style as default. So for that, we need to go to this blur pink module. Let's mouse over on this. And here we have a star icon. It says assign preset as default. Let's click on this. It's going to ask us to confirm. We click on yes. And now let's see what happens if we add a new blur module. Let's click on the plus icon, search for blur module. If we click on this and boom, we now have the preset applied as default to this blur module. So this is how we can create element preset 
make it as default to create our own design framework. So why does this all matter? Because it's fast, it keeps your site consistent and it makes updates effortless. Need to tweak a color? Just change the variable and it flows everywhere. Want to refine a button, update preset and all buttons follow the suit. It's like having a design superpower without any coding needed. So there you have it, your roadmap to build a no-code design framework with Divi 5. With design variables, option group presets and element presets, you are set to craft websites that look amazing and save you time. So want to give it a spin? Then go ahead and download Divi 5 Public Alpha today and start creating using these design framework. For the full scope, make sure you check out our blog post that we are going to link in the video description below. And if you like this video, then make sure you give it a like and share it with your friends and community. And for more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we upload our next video. That's it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.